Hi, my name is Adrian Hollis and I'm a first year law student at James Cook University. Today I'm going to talk about three key components of communication when doing a client interview. Um, the overarching theme would be emotional intelligence and the three key components that I'd like to talk about are body language, active listening and self-awareness. So first of all, let's have a look at body language. So Body language um, includes gestures or facial expressions, eye behaviour, touching and other movements of the limbs and body serving as non-verbal communication. Um, gestures reveal how people are feeling, so a particular look on someone's face and movements of their head uh, provide reliable cues as to approval, disapproval or disbelief. So the role of body language during communication has an alarming impact on another party. Um, the conducted study that I've put the chart up for, um, it says only 7% of the information that, trans, um, that humans transmit to others is the language that we actually use, the words that we speak. 38% of it is how we speak, so the tone that we use. Um, and then 55% is through the body language or posture. It's therefore pretty obvious that um, body language is probably our biggest communication tool and probably one of our most important. Uh, we need to be self-aware of our body language and manage it appropriately in interviews as it's, in it's essential in building rapport with our clients. So let's move on now to active listening. So active listening should be broken into three parts. The first um, is demonstrates moderate to high level of interest in what the speaker is actually saying and display non-verbal move movements or cues, so just like back to body language. Uh, the second element includes refraining from any judgment. It's really important that um, you don't judge a client when they're giving you their situation because we don't know the full story just yet. And then the third one uh, would be to encourage the speaker to continue to elaborate their experience. So for example, if someone tells you that they're frustrated, listen to that and say that you can understand how the situation could be frustrating. Active listening response uh, theoretically communicates empathy and it builds trust by indicating unconditional regard and by confirming, by confirming the other person's experience. So a final point is self-awareness. A recent Harvard research review suggests that when we, are, when we see ourselves clearly, we're more confident and we're more creative. We make sounder decisions and we build stronger relationships and we also communicate more effectively. So the study conducted showed that there were two main types of self-awareness. The first being internal, so how we view ourselves personally. And then the second being external, so how we think other people view us. So the chart I've put up here indicates the differences between the two and what kind of person this makes us. So based on Tasha Yurik's research, which is the one I've just displayed, it's clear being self-aware is a critical component of our communication skills as lawyers and what we think and what we can all do to continue to work on and develop ourselves in our self-awareness. So in conclusion, all the research I've done has indicated that it's important to have a high level of emotional intelligence quotient or a high EIQ. And the benefit of this is being aware of our actions and how they can influence others and make others feel. Thanks so much for listening.